Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. The contract has been stipulated between Niccolò Paganini and the devil, wherein the musician is granted eternal fame in exchange for his soul. Signed, Paganini and Satan. <laughs> I get it. Daniel's playing a joke on us. Right, Kate? Yes. He would do something like that, wouldn't he? Right. A man doesn't turn into a... Welcome back. So you've just heard the trailer for Paganini Horror. This is the Italian horror collection, disc number 52 from 88 Films. And uh, according to the 88 Films website, it says thus, an all-girl rock group head to a remote villa for a music video shoot. They are in desperate need of a hit single and purchase sheet music from the mysterious Mr. Pickett, played by the legendary Donald Pleasance. They are told the music is a lost piece from the legendary violinist Niccolo Paganini. And see this as their ticket to top the charts. Well, do they know that this music is cursed and they have just unleashed hell upon themselves. 
Soon, the spirit of Paganini is roaming the villa armed with a murderous violin and picking off the theme-hungry band members one by one. From the minds of Luigi Cosi of Contamination fame and Daria Nicolodi of Suspiria fame comes Paganini Horror, a slash-tastic piece of cheesy Euro horror that could only have been made in the 80s. 88 films are proud to present this bonkers slice of Italian cult cinema, a camp classic in the making, ripe for rediscovery and destined to be your new favourite worst movie, now even more outrageous thanks to the rocking 2K restoration. The special features here are a brand new 2K remaster from the original 16mm negative in 166.1 aspect ratio, an extensive clean-up and colour correction carried out in the UK, remastered uncompressed English audio, Optional English SDH subtitles, remastered uncompressed Italian audio with newly translated subtitles, audio commentary by genre expert Troy Holworth, bloody violin director Luigi Cosi on Paganini Horror. It's a kind of conversation that lasts about 31 minutes. A brand new interview with Pietro Grinaldi uh, at 26 minutes in length. You've got a remastered trailer. This is region locked, region B in the UK. I believe. I want to say Severin put it out in the States, but I might be wrong about that one. Uh, audio is LPCM stereo, picture is 1080p, HD 1661. The runtime is an hour and 23 minutes. The language is English and Italian with English subtitles. So this was a first time watch for me. I know it kind of weirdly by reputation, if I'm honest, and I don't actually know where that reputation comes from, out with the fact that it's generally regarded as, you know, a... a pretty forgettable slice of Italian, well, late 80s Italian horror. And I think context is king here when it comes to actually establishing what it is that Paganini Horror is trying to do. The interesting thing about this movie is the year it's released in terms of 1989. A lot of the mainstays that we know within Italian horror cinema specifically, have kind of lost their foot and they are disconnected from their audience. Yes, they're still making movies, but on a fraction of a budget that they used to have. And I think that plays a lot into it. The transition away from Giallo, that's right, take a drink if you have Duncan Bingo and you were waiting for Giallo coming up. Uh, the move away from Giallo into just pure kind of supernatural horror in the 80s was quite remarkable. This was a big push now. Um, this is certainly the direction we're going. And whilst some of the quote-unquote masters or maestros uh, were starting to lose a foot in, in cinema, you were getting a new wave of kind of voices coming up, whether that is a, like a Lamberto Bava, um, who some people believe is purely trading off the back of his dad's name. But I would say in the 80s, he's got a couple of really interesting movies that are worth checking out. And Paganini Horror definitely owes a bit to movies like Murder Rock by Fulci and at the same time something like Demons uh, by Bava. But on top of that as well, I think you have people like Mikel Suave who is, you know, essentially doing versions of these movies but much more interestingly and much more competently and is about to become the the quote-unquote golden boy of of that ilk of new directors coming out and sadly his career would never really live up to the expectations put on it from... I mean, you could argue the case if Cemetery Man had become this fucking huge, colossal release that there would be a bit more money for other directors to play with. Um, sadly, it wasn't. But if you look at people like like Argento by this time, 89, what he's about to do... 89, he's, he's already done things like um, Creepers, like, aka Phenomena... And he is starting to, you know, he's starting to lose... I mean, he's going to come back and do Two Evil Eyes at the beginning of the next decade, but he's having a bit of a rocky late 80s, if we're being honest. Uh, Fulci is all over the fucking place. Um, we are one year away from him releasing the absolute bonkers uh, Cat in the Brain. And, you know, his career's winding down with, with so many missteps. It's unbelievable. Sergio Martino's kind of taken a, a step back from making horror altogether. He's not even doing that stuff anymore. And, yeah, it's, it's so, like I say, context is king here on this one. This is a movie 100% I would agree with from the, the, the kind of info and the blurb here. 
that is 100% you know an 80s movie this had to be done in the 80s it would never have happened in the 90s and to be honest it would never have happened in the 70s and that's a double edged sword to be fair yes it could only have happened in the 80s but should it happen full stop on it's kind of fundamental core there are a few interesting things here it's just not a really well executed horror movie if I'm being honest some of the practical effects are still kind of cool. It's nowhere near as bloody as it should be. Um, the whole premise is pretty shit, if I'm honest. Sorry for those that really like Paganini horror. Um, it, it is kind of shit. And I'd, I'll double down on it. The idea, in principle, of a kind of haunted sheet of music I like, I think that's kind of cool. The idea of a kind of fausty pact with the devil that Paganini had made as a way to become as popular and as famous as he was, I kind of like. This idea of the you kind of the, the blues man that created rock and roll signing a deal with the devil to become shit hot, I, I like that. You know, these stories are uh, transcend you right into the horror genre for sure and, and completely fit. Where this movie kind of loses it is it's like unabashed desire to shoot about four music videos in the middle of this, which are just tedious with this horrible fucking earworm of a kind of 80s pop song that just sticks with you. The idea that like a, a, a rock pop group is going to take a bit of classical music written by Paganini and this is going to be their, their next ticket to, you know, the big time. Doesn't really make any sense. The people stay in this building well past the point of when they should and then the, the ultimate reveal in this movie, specifically that, you know, this is a, a house that is locked in a weird kind of time loop um, of purgatory at the hands of Daria Nicolodi, who is essentially condemned to bring new souls to the house for all time um, to Mr Pickett, played by Donald Pleasance, who we're going to get to in a second here, who is essentially the devil. Um, I mean, I, on principle, I, I kind of think that's a kind of cool idea. The way it's done is shit. Um, it's really, really, really bad. The weapon, I don't like either. The violin with the, the knife in it, it's too on the nose. You know what I mean? Right, he's a violinist. Does he have to kill people with his violin? I don't think so. Um, you know, that to me feels a bit too twee, a bit too campy. Um, the cinematography, though, is fun. It's got a kind of bonker cinematography. Some of the dialogue is like so cheesy and so bad that, you know, it becomes entertaining to watch. But the whole setup and execution is where the movie kind of falls apart, if, if I'm honest. Um... Donald Pleasance, God bless him. I mean, this is the epitome of a paycheck if ever I saw one. He doesn't look like he wants to be here. He doesn't look like he's fucking interested. He looks old. This is a man who has lived, you know what I mean? And he's not got many years left. And yeah, it's a shame to see how far Pleasance fell. I mean, you look at his performance in Phenomena. I love that. And that was only like two, three years before this. He is going through the motions here. He's just doing what he needs to do. He's not nearly as sinister enough to be the devil. Uh, there's a wonderful scene of him throwing his quote-unquote demons off a building, which is just basically money. Um, and a, a kind of weird, almost an interesting concept never touched on is this desire that the root of all evil is money. Um, which I would have much rather they'd leaned into that. That could have been a really interesting story, but it's just a taste. And it is very much like the money um, in the suitcase, just this throwaway stuff that is it, never really touched on again. It's bookended with them. They obviously couldn't really afford Pleasance that much. Uh, even Daria Nicolodi, who I genuinely love in, in her performances, specifically in the 80s, I think she's she a great on-screen presence, is kind of phoning it in here. Um, she's trying to play like this really malevolent character, but it's not it's not good enough. And I, I love the transition that she made from being like um you know the heroine in a lot of movies to, to the villain that she did specifically in the 80s. She was taking more villainous roles. It just it, it doesn't quite work for her here. She's a bit too kind of mustache twiddling uh for, for my liking. 
it's a it's an incredibly frustrating watch if I'm honest because there are elements here that I really like like I said before the cover art alone should give this movie like a five out of five it is fucking amazing this is the sort of thing that you want as a poster up on your wall somewhere um, so I love that aspect I love the aspect of like the idea the kind of Faustian pact I think that's really really great but it's bogged down by this incessant nature to, to do music videos and play like bad 80s pop music and the, the kills are nowhere near as vicious as they should be from a weapon which is shit on paper and shit on execution um, and yeah a story that feels even at an hour and 20 minutes felt a bit long I, I kind of felt like we were treading water if you take those music videos out this movie's not even an hour long so yeah, overall, kind of frustrating watch. Not what I wanted by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but like I say, context is key here. You have to specifically look at the time period this movie came out and what other Italian directors were doing in or around this time to understand this shift. Demons was an unlikely hit. And I think there's a lot of people that then decided that music like entwined with the horror movies would be a great idea in Italy, like they did in the States. We're just a whole lot better at doing it in the States, if we're being honest. So yeah, Paganini Horror, weird misstep overall. I did still kind of like it, if I'm honest. I would give it a 3 out of 5. I don't know if I'll rush back to watch this one again, um, unless it's like an ironic double bill and I'm doubling it up with, with I don't know, some other movie, um, with Stage Fright or something. It might be quite interesting. And there's another example of like movies that were coming out in and around this time that were just infinitely better. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm glad I own it on Blu-ray. I'm glad it's in the collection, but would I recommend it? Probably not. 